This project is how PepsiCo is being an innovator, even in their internal processes. The problem is with great scale comes great difficulty. Imagine the scale of Pepsi and every single city in the world sells Pepsi. PepsiCo has come up with a way to use 3D printing to go from design to implementation faster than ever before. So now, how long have you been here at PepsiCo? Well, it's been almost 10 years now. Uh, and I remember as soon as I arrived, I wanted to redesign every bottle, every can, had so many different ideas. Well, that sounds simple enough. I mean, how hard could it be, right? Well, that's what I was thinking back then. And then very quickly I realized how amazingly difficult it is to redesign something like this because of the scale of this business. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it must cost like a jillion dollars to change something <laughs> like this. Yes, and we reach billions of people every day. So imagine you know, the complexity of something like this. I understood that actually what we needed to do was to inspire the organization to take certain kind of risks, to do certain kind of investments. So we found the way over the years to invest in new technologies and advanced methodologies. It was not about the design of the product itself. It was the design of the process to get to that design of the bottle. Hey, Max, what are all these dinosaur teeth doing on the table over here? <laughs> these are 3D printed rapid prototypes. We actually use them to very rapidly iterate and get something to the hands of our marketing team. Now, you know what's missing for me here is that these are white. They are missing the CMF, the colors, the materials, and the finishes. Now you're kind of asking the marketing team to use their imagination a lot. That's right, yes. So, so we came up with a new technology that we would um, present to our marketing team. Whoa, are you telling me this is a 3D print? That's amazing. And what's even better is that we can do this within 24 hours. So Chris, what does this new technology mean for you? Well, this has really changed the game. In over 10 years of doing industrial design, I've never been able to have a high fidelity prototype this quickly to take your final design and sell it into all the stakeholders. People have a really hard time interpreting this as the final design, but this allows them to see it in almost full fidelity. And we used to have to rely on a 3D rendering to create that effect. And this bottle is built off of a rendering file that I've just dragged into a program and assigned all the materials to and then it prints it in those materials. <laughs> That's amazing. I just finished a project where I could have really used something like this. It would have saved me a ton of time. Jim, I love coming to these workshops. So you're an engineering company. We're actually more than an engineering firm. We're actually a research and development firm that helps take a concept from the early phases through physical virtual testing all the way to production. And you're working with PepsiCo on this bottle. We are, we're supporting the PepsiCo team on the development of this Mountain Dew bottle. We're collaborating with them to basically do the virtual testing and physical testing before it hits the market. Oh, hello, someone's left this. <laughs> You think it's real, don't you? My goodness, I mean, I was pretty sure it was 3D printed, but you wouldn't know looking at it. So I guess other things here are lying around are 3D printed like this? Yeah, so that's an example of a product that we took from an industrial design concept all the way to, through production. Make sure it fits and yeah. it's proper. And, and, and make the right decisions. Make the right decisions. So Ryan, you're stress testing our bottle here. Yeah, this is a three foot drop simulation of a Mountain Dew bottle. Three foot? So I guess that's the height of knocking it off a bench or out of someone's hand. Yeah, we want to make sure once it's in the hands of a consumer, they have a, a good experience. And what's all the colored areas? Uh, yeah, so this is regions of higher stress uh, during the drop simulation. Uh, it looks good. Uh, the stresses are low enough that it won't break from a three foot drop. Uh, over here we have a conveyor simulation. Uh, yeah, we don't want to have to redesign a whole production facility. So this is the bottles running down the, the conveyor. So what would happen if one of them did skip out? Uh, yeah, that can cause major issues at a plant. They'd have to shut down production and someone would have to go pick up all the bottles. And I guess at this scale that would cost a kajillion dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we want to make sure it works virtually before ever making any physical bottles or rails. Rails? Oh, what? Have you created this whole rail system in the physical world? Yeah, we have this replicated at our Pepsi lab. Oh, I want to go see that. Oh, here it is in the real world. I can't believe you guys built this whole thing just to uh, do some tests. 
Yeah, in the long run, this is a lot cheaper than, than interrupting production for Pepsi. Their plants are full of, full of curves uh, as the bottles go around and, and through the production line. And uh, if a problem's gonna occur, this is where it's gonna happen. Today, we've got uh, a few of their newly redesigned two liter Mountain Dew bottles that we're gonna run. And uh, we've already run them at you know, slow speed, so we know they'll work there. Oh, I like how they twist as they go around. Fantastic, but that's not production speed, is it? No, production speed is much, much faster. Can we crank it up, Matt? Yeah, I think we can give that a try. All righty, so this is warp speed. This is production speed. Yep. So do your worst, Ryan. Whew. Whew. No problem, good to go. Good to go. So Scott, here's where we started. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, and here's where we ended up. It's Whoa. something that's much more uh, usable. Wow, I really love the uh, big strong stance this thing has, and I love this grip too. Well, in order for us to get this awesome new grip, we had to make sure we weren't using more plastic than the original. So you're telling me this bottle and this bottle have exactly the same amount of plastic? They had the same amount of plastic, and in fact, the label's shorter, so we are saving on plastic. Oh yeah, and that really adds up over millions and millions of bottles, I'm sure. We had to make sure that our bottles also worked within our existing crates, which take our bottles from the factory to the store. Oh yeah, so the diameter is really important, but wait a second, if you're designing a whole new bottle, why can't you just design a new crate too? I wish it was that simple, but we've got millions of these in our distribution network. Yeah, and there would go another gajillion dollars out the window. Exactly. Yeah, so Maro, that is an amazing process, but in the end, it's really the product that matters. Well, you're completely right. Uh, sometimes you get trapped into the process, but what you really need to focus on is creating something that is so iconic that can end up in the hands of Jimmy Fallon, for oh, instance. Oh yeah, you know, I think I saw that episode. <laughs> and you want something that is totally user-friendly. Why don't you pour it? All right. Well, we didn't figure out yet how to 3D print the liquid in it. Uh, well, there's always something new to work on. A designer's dream project would be to create a consumer product that finds its way into the hands of millions across the globe. But making that happen is a whole nother ball game. Salesforce is proud to present the Relationship Design Award. This award highlights one innovative project that promotes positive change, fosters human connection, and drives social impact. Relationship design represents the next evolution of the design practice. And it's really fundamentally centered on the idea of stakeholders, not just shareholders. We're looking to celebrate those products and design innovations that put the stakeholder at the center. The winner will be announced in the final episode of the season. 